the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. You know, there's certain periods of the year when the location of bait fish is the key, is the absolute key. It's without a doubt a critical link. During the late spring, after the spawn, what happens? Bass will school and bait fish become the predominant forage, mostly in open water on the main lake. Now during the fall, schools of shad migrate into the tributaries, deep pockets, and the coves to spawn and could provide some of the most fantastic fishing. Excellent fast fishing at fast action. Now during the winter, these schools of shad usually relate to deeper water. Now during the pre-spawn and spawning period, I paid little attention to bait fish location, but at other times of the year, when I'm really searching out areas, the presence of bait fish is the number one thing that I look for. Pretty little short fat fish. Hello everybody. I'd like to devote today's show to a subject that I've believed in since I was old enough to tie on a fishing lure. <laughs> and that subject is the importance of fish vision and color perception. Now, I'll be the first to admit there's a ton about the anatomy of fish that I don't fully understand. But what I have learned is that fish use sight almost 100% in their selection of food. It's true, they are for sure greatly influenced by sound, smell, texture, and taste, but sight is by far their dominant sense. One thing that top hook, that fish gonna throw that thing in my hand. Ah, got him! Got him! Got him! Easy. Hello. See ya. Today is early spring, and I'm doing something I really enjoy, and that's fishing pre-spawn bass. This is the time of year when shallow bodies of water begin to warm, drawing these great fish to the shallows. Now this initial move is not a spawning movement. The spawn usually occurs much later, at least a few weeks after their shallow migration, depending on weather. 
These early spring colder water movements are associated mostly with something to eat. Bass follow the forage, which in this case is threadfin shad. Here also, the bass will feed heavily so they can build up additional energy for the upcoming spawn. And during this pre-spawn period, they're fairly easy to catch once located and provided you offer them something they can see and relate to. What we're offering them now is a bomber shallow fat-free shad. And believe you me, this is a color that's most visible at this time, the citrus shad. It's a known fact that fish see colors and shades of the same color differently in different water clarities and in different light levels. Some colors are highly visible to fish at one time of the day and in one water clarity and become practically invisible at another time of day or different water clarity. This is Mother Nature's way of protecting some species of forage fish. If they remained visible to predators all the time, they would have been eaten long ago. It's like a deer. If they were the color of Tennessee orange, just how long do you suppose they would survive during the hunting season? Fishermen often think that fish have turned off when the color they're using quits catching Ooh, fish. better fish. But it may be that the light or the clarity changed and the fish can't see their offering. Where are you going? Barely hooked. Got that hook just barely in that bottom lip. Ooh, look at the size of that. Let me tell you something else I found very interesting about a fish's vision. Ichthyologists and biologists both have found through years of research that a fish's eye receives five times more light than humans do. Their eyes gather more light and in effect amplify it, allowing them to see at much lower light levels than we can and at much greater distances. Those in the know say that fish can see over 40 feet in relatively clear water, where we, in a scuba gear, can see approximately 10 to 12 feet. In stained water, where we can see two to four feet, tests show that fish can see 14 to 16 feet. Now, in a muddy environment, where we can only see six inches or so, fish can still see three to five feet. I... <laughs> you little rascal. Another little, little spunky one here. Okay, it's my turn. You've done all your little jumping. Come here. Come up here with that pretty, oh, that pretty little bait. That you hung way back there in the back of the face. Aren't those pretty fish? They are just beautiful, beautiful fish. You know you're pretty. See ya. Missing fish on a hard plug? Well, think about this. Before you set the hook on any fish, the line, the rod tip, and the fish must be semi-perfectly tight. Slack line prevents the action of the rod from being transmitted to the hook. Any strike on an artificial plug is a direct take. That is, the bass intends to swallow it directly. You can be sure the fish isn't about to hold the plug in its mouth, play with it, and then swallow it. They quickly realize that it's not the real thing and then spit it out. Yet, this takes longer to happen than you might suspect. When a bass opens his mouth to hit any bait or lure, he's also swallowing water, taking in a lot of water. In fact, the bait is really floating in his mouth. And this, well, it continues to float while all the excess water is being expelled through the gills. Usually a fish won't detect an artificial offering until he's ejected all the water and clamps down on it. Now, the major mistake made by a lot of fishermen using artificial baits is to set the hook too quickly. Now don't misunderstand 
and believe that you've got lots of times. But you do have more time than you would suspect. So if you're missing fish, what you want to do, you'll improve your hook sets tremendously if you hesitate just a little bit because this does work. Just pause just a little bit before you set the hook. Oh, I missed him. No, he came back. Right on that six. Right on the six. <laughs> you just bulldogged it right on there, didn't you, partner? Yeah, you did. I saw you when you did it. Here we go again. I'm going to show you a butterball. Look at that little Pudjo. Isn't that a pretty bass? Yep, you are. <laughs>